Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixim Perfect, and today we're gonna give this regular marble portrait the Midas touch. And can you guess who is gonna give the Midas touch? Of course, the only god in the Photoshop world, the Almighty Curves. Of course, with the help of Saint Color Lookup Table and also Saint Hue Saturation and others. Um, it's gonna be a holy event, so without any further ado, <laughs> let's get started. Back in the holy world of Photoshop, and if you want to go ahead and download this photo and follow along, you already know what to do. Check the holy links in the description. Alright, the first thing we need to do is to separate the marble statue from that of the background. And for that, we have lots of ways, but before that, always have a copy of the background layer for backup. So press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy of the background layer. Let's make one more copy just in case we need it. Now, select the quick selection tool, and we're going to use the select subject right here. You can use your pen tool or your favorite selection tool, whatever you wish. Just this is just faster. You can take all the time in the world to correct the selection, but we're going to go fast here. All right, once you have it, click on the mask button. All right, and now simply make a black background by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choose solid color, choose black, whatever color you want. Now, before we let our God, the almighty curves to work its magic on it, we need to strip away all the colors, strip away all the impurities. And for that, let's create a hue saturation, saint hue saturation by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and then choose hue saturation, saint hue saturation and decrease the saturation all the way to the left. Now in future, you might want to add color to the background. So just in that case, hold the Alt key or the Option key and click on the line between these two layers so that the hue saturation is limited just to that statue. The next thing we do is let the almighty curves work its magic. So create a curves adjustment layer, click on this button. This will limit the curves just to the statue right there. All right, now all we have to do is just make zigzags zig to the zag right there and just create a point bring it down create a point bring it up create one more point bring it down one more point bring it up one more point bring it down you can create as many zigzags as you wish and as you can see how they change it now the first goal here is to just make it chrome or metallic right as you can see this is looking pretty darn cool right you can take all the time in the world to make these adjustments now depending upon your statue or your choice of object the curves might be different. Just take your time to adjust it. I've already taken my time and saved one as a preset. So this one worked really well for me for this image. Now you can download this preset in the holy links, but then again, uh, it might only work with this image. For your image, you might have to make some adjustments. Take the time to get the best results according to your taste. All right, now that we have it in Chrome, let's group it all in. So select the first one, hold the shift key, select the subject as well. So this is just chroming. Now there's a problem with this. It's all flat. There's no shadow in there. There's no dimension in there. Now since this was already a white statue, we only need to just darken and add shadows and stuff. If this was a gray statue or a dark statue, you could also add some brightness to it or highlights to it as well using the screen blend mode. But in this case, multiply would be fine. So with this copy that we already had, let's bring it to the top. All right, this is just for creating the shadows and change the blend mode from normal to multiply. You see this adds a little bit of shadow to the portrait. Now also for this layer, we want it to be masked. We don't want to include the background because then again, if you change the background color, something other than black, see the original background is showing up. We don't want any of that. So for it, we're going to just copy this mask from right there. So hold the Alt key, the Option key, click and drag the mask to the top. Okay, so this one has a mask now as well. So that way, if you choose a lighter background, it won't be affected by the original background. The most important thing, name the saints. So this is gonna be Saint Shadow With. So this is for creating the shadows. Now let's take a look at the before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Looks much more dimensionated. Now, the next thing we need to do is to add a curves adjustment layer and adjust Saint Shadow With, right? Almighty Curves knows everything, does everything, can do everything. So click on this button right there so that the curves is limited to saint shadow it. So now all we need to do is to adjust the curves accordingly so that dimension is adjusted. Now this looks pretty nice. Now of course we don't want so much shadow. So let's go to this layer and decrease the opacity. That looks a little better because we don't want to take away all the shine from the shadow areas as well. The next step is going to completely complete the process actually. And after that, whatever we do will be just basic simple styling or background creation. It's pretty simple. And the final touch here, the gold color will be given by Saint Color Lookup. So click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose Color Lookup. And also we want it to be limited just to the subject area. So hold the Alt key, the Option key, 
click and drag the mask and drop it here. Of course, we want to replace the mask. Click yes. You could also use clipping mask to clip it. But anyway, this works for me. There are dozens of different ways to do the same thing in Photoshop and there are no right or wrong. As long as the end result is good, that's all that matters. You know, usually I see a lot of great artists create just one or two layers and just merging every one of those being absolutely destructive, but their end results are brilliant. As long as the end result is great in Photoshop, it doesn't matter how you got there. All right, so in this case, we can simply choose this color lookup, edgy amber, and it does everything for us now to make it even more exciting you can create shadows or interesting backgrounds so in this case i'm going to change the background to something like dark blue so let's go for something like this how do you feel about that and also to add a little more depth you can also add additional lights and shadows so in this case first of all let's add a shadow to the background so again i'm opening up the chroming layer inside of that we can create a shadow of layer one copy which is actually the subject or in other words the marble statue double click on the right side of the subject layer this will open up the layer styles dialog box inside of that you will find drop shadow now do you know how to handle drop shadows like a pro it's very simple select drop shadow right there first of all to show up the properties of it now you can of course change the angle change the distance do all that kind of stuff but the best way is just drag it grab it from right there and just take it anywhere you wish now this is a pretty large image so it's lagging a bit but that's fine you can, of course, change the opacity and everything, but this is okay. Hit okay, because we're gonna separate it anyway. Now we want to have full control over the drop shadow. For that, we need to separate the drop shadow. And how do we separate drop shadows? Simple, make sure the layer with the drop shadow is selected, and then go to layer, layer style, and then create layer. Hit okay. All right, now the drop shadow is separated. Of course, we want to blur it, do different things. Before we apply any filter, can you guess what we do? It's very essential to keep it non-destructive and also gives us the ability to change the values later. What is it? Converting it to a smart object. And the way we do that is by going to filter and then convert for smart filters. Hit OK. Now let's apply a simple Gaussian blur to it because we want a little bit more blur here. Go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. Now inside layer styles, the blur couldn't be increased to this extent as much as we want in this case. So for this one, let's go for something really very high. 600 ish i want it to be absolutely soft so once you're satisfied with the values just hit okay now we do have a soft shadow in there now to not confuse things let's take the shadow out of this group so i'm just going to take it and bring it out of this group all right let's close the group because it could be a little confusing now also let's add some lights as well to add the lights lights will be added on top of the background layer so in this case the background is this blue solid color on top of that you can create a gradient now let's create a gradient from white to transparent so on the left hand side we want the color to be white and on the right hand side we want no color all right at the top just click on it make sure the opacity is zero at the top on the left hand side the opacity should be 100 so that's how you go from color to transparent hit ok now change the style from linear to radio now you can increase the scale to increase the size of it and move it at the top yes you can move it pretty sweet isn't it so i'm gonna move it right there make it a little more exciting from here this seems to be about right hit ok let's change the opacity to about 50 percent let's create one more of these just make a copy press ctrl or command j and for this one decrease the opacity to half of that 25 just a second light just to support it and this one let's move it to the left here hit ok once you're happy with this and there you have it still something is missing why don't we add a little bit of grain to it press ctrl shift n command shift n change the blend mode to overlay choose fill with overlay neutral color so that gray is hidden because overlay is a blend mode which hides 50 percent gray now let's go to filter convert for smart filters hit ok let's add a little bit of noise by going to filter again and then noise and simply add noise because we want to add noise 30 is fine or you can also go for 40 if you wish to and the noise is very sharp so we need to blur it out by going to filter blur and then gaussian blur i was thinking one not 600 this time because that won't work and hit ok and let's take a look at the results it looks pretty good now what about if we go to double click on Gaussian blur and that's why this is a smart object so that we can change the values later let's go for two gives it a pretty nice texture still I feel that the background is just too bright so create a solid color adjustment layer choose black and then simply just decrease the opacity 
this will give it a little more darkness to work with. Now I like the darkness there, but it compromises a little on saturation. So we can go back to this blue color right there. We can increase the saturation by taking it to the right, but that is not helping. How about on top of this, I add a hue saturation adjustment layer, and then we try to increase the saturation. See how brilliant this looks now? And there you have it. Midas just touched it. Just a side note, if you feel like the shadows are getting just too dark, well, just reduce the effect of Saint Shadow With. So simply select Saint Shadow With layer and just decrease the opacity. We're gonna go for about 30 and have a look. We have the glow now in the shadows as well. So that's how to turn statues or any objects to gold. This, my friend, is my final result and that's pretty much it. The concept here is pretty simple. All you have to keep in mind is this. First of all, strip away all the colors, all right, with the hue saturation adjustment limb. Just take the saturation all the way to the left. Secondly, just add the almighty curves and just add zigzags on it. That's it, done, now it's chrome. And the third step is simply add Saint Color Lookup with a speciality on edgy amber. So that is the secret recipe, my friend, to turn statue into gold. Now, only if I could sell it, unfortunately. I hope this video helped you. And if it did, make sure to give us a like. And also, don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you don't miss any other future tips, tricks, or tutorials. This video is made possible by this amazing, absolutely brilliant, and nice Patreons who support Piximperfect on Patreon, which helps to keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.